Through the years, Home for the Golden Gophers has been both outdoors and off campus. The 1940 national champions played their home games at the old Minneapolis Arena, north of Lake Street. The Minnesota hockey team would travel out to the rink in, uh, in taxi cabs. <laughs> in 1950, the Gophers moved into a brand new facility on the west end of Williams Arena. In its time, it was a palace with a huge ice sheet, room in the corners, and when North Dakota came to town, seating for 9,000. Two-thirds of them were Canadian, and the students got together, God save the Queen. You know, I mean, they wanted to kind of put the needle in it about two minutes later. Our goaltender was Jimmy Matson at the time. There had to be a reply from our friends from North Dakota. You could hear, God save Matson. <laughs> The U of M versus UND was one of the great rivalries in college hockey. Raucous in Minneapolis, frigid in Grand Fork, where the home team played in a Quonset hut called the Potato Barn. It was just about as cold inside as outside. You could see your breath and lights can make your helmets look yellow. And uh, you're always afraid that if you got hurt there, your veterinarian would be in there to sew you up. Lou Nanny made a name for himself as an offensive defenseman. Nanny is still the only blue liner to lead the conference in scoring. At the Potato Barn, Louie also made a discovery. Blankets were standard equipment in the penalty box. Louie used to go out and get an intentional penalty, penalty so he could go in the penalty box and wrap up in the blanket. He did that about four times and John just got, oh man, he got teed off at him. So down below between periods, John said, Louie, take off that damn uniform. You'll never play for Minnesota again. <laughs> but of course he did earning All-American honors in 1963. In the years to come, the series guaranteed to fill the barn was the semi-annual feud with Wisconsin. Of course, I fanned the flames a little bit, and, and the Wisconsin people would come in, and great fans, unbelievable. You know, and they, I said, gee, if I was from Madison, I'd go to Minneapolis to watch hockey. I'd do anything to get on Madison, you know. The rivalry with Big Red got its start in 1966, when Wisconsin hockey was a club sport, and the Gophers were contending for a league championship. Somebody said, John, do you think there'll ever be a serious Minnesota-Wisconsin hockey rivalry? And uh, John said, well, it's, it's conceivable. It won't happen for a while. And uh, it certainly won't happen until Wisconsin beats Minnesota, and then that'll be the beginning of it. Well, we proceed to go out the next night, and they beat us in overtime. So anyway, I always told people that I was one of the 20 responsible for putting uh, Wisconsin hockey on the map. On the home front, the borders were expanding rapidly, fueled by the Mayasic era, by John Mariucci, and by the building itself. Kids used to come in, I mean, the traveling teams, and we could beat them on Friday because their mouths were still, you know, open <laughs> from the awe of being in that huge building, the big ice sheet. Just a, a great place to watch a hockey game, you know. Some of the seats were awful, but it was great to be in that environment. Hey, get your gopher program, here. Maroon and gold, and the Minnesota Rousers. The sights and sounds on game night created an atmosphere that echoed from the basement to center ice and from one generation to the next. When you came up from underneath there to come up, there was it, it just gave you goose uh, bumps off. And, and they had a, a tremendous effect on our team. I remember being so pumped up, you know, you just run up the stairs to the ice and, you know, a lap around the rink and then, the, you know, drop the puck and go. Going for Minnesota, number 19, Captain Kevin Hartful. To a man, the players remember the stairway, that long climb from their locker room down below. Goaltender Brad Shellstad remembers the window. In those days, anyways, we played a lot of Saturday afternoon games. We'd play a Friday night, Saturday afternoon series at home. And if it was a sunny day, there might be some glare coming off it. There was also a window behind the visitor's bench on that side, and, and you could get some glare coming in uh, down through that window. So I'd ask uh, my mother to sit in front of that window to see if she could you know, block, the, block some of the sunlight from creating a glare just inside the blue line. For 43 seasons, this building was Minnesota's window to college hockey, its home ice advantage, and home to all Americans, record setters, and champions. In 1985, the west end of Williams Arena was renamed in honor of John Mariucci. He said to his wife, Gretchen, he says, Gretchen, she says, we, gotta, we have to get a mop and pail and clean this place up now that my name is on this. 
If there should be anybody that uh, the arena in Minnesota is named for, it should be John Mariucci. It's, it's a shame he didn't get to see the new arena. The Godfather didn't live long enough to see his new home. In the fall of 1993, construction was completed on the new Mariucci Arena, a facility that is nationally acclaimed as the finest in all college hockey. The Gophers moved out with remnants of the past.